What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, buddy? How you doing, hello, man? Hello, hello. Ah, you good? Yeah, I'm great. How are you? Hey, I'm awesome, man. All right. Ready for another episode, my brother. Mm-hmm. Me too. A lot more, a lot more ready than last time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, people? Uh, welcome to the Like Father, Like Son Sports Podcast, where we celebrate the timeless bond of a family through the love of sports. Join us as we dive into the thrilling world of athletics, sharing stories, insights, and experiences from both the father and the son perspective. Whether it's reminiscing about legendary games, discussing the latest sports news, or exploring how sports shapes our lives, we aim to inspire and entertain. So grab your favorite snack, settle in, and let's kick off an exciting journey through the heart of sports and family. My son, Tyler A. Sam. What's up, boy? Hello, hello. How you doing, Dad? Great, man. Great, man. Episode two. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> no, you can never be. Uh, so let's start out. Uh, so if you like the video, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it, it helps out the algorithm. My man, Tyler. Uh, so let's uh, rehash this, uh, this podcast that we're doing together. Uh, I'm the dad, you're the son, yeah. in case people didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to do it with you, man, because I feel like social media is a big part of bonding these days. And, it, you know, and, you know, I was talking to a, one of my students today, and she was saying how She's doing Roblox and, you know, she she she, she d- makes friends based off playing Roblox, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just crazy how social media has brought everybody together. It's like, I, you know, like, I feel like Mark Zuckerberg is like the father of social media. Yeah. I, I've never heard anybody call him that, but I'm calling him that. Okay. <laughs> Zuckerberg seems to be the father of social media, right? Mm-hmm. He had a plan, and I'm not even sure if he felt that, like, his stuff could, could go to this level. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know, this being on all different platforms, as a podcast, as a YouTube video, uh, I feel like social media can bring you and I closer together. You grew oh. up in... Wichita, Kansas. Mm-hmm. I've been in Houston, and we've we've had that relationship, but it's mm-hmm. been a long distance one. Yeah, it, it feels like we're closer now than we've ever been. I agree, and uh, I'm excited about it. Excited about this podcast, and I thank you for uh, agreeing to do it with me. Of course, thank you for asking. Me. Man, you know, I always go ahead. I always would try to think of ways for us to connect more and to grow closer. Uh, but I didn't think about having a podcast, and that's that's a pretty good way to do that. So, absolutely, absolutely, my man. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I've done quite a few podcasts with quite a few different people. Mm -hmm. So, I said, why don't I do one with my son? First of all, I've done financial podcasts, and I, and I currently do interview podcasts, sports podcasts. So I said, I'm trying to think, what do you do? What do you like to do? What could we do a podcast about, right? Yeah. Now, I sat there and, and heard you and Evan. Evan's my second son, who's 16. And y'all talked about anime and all this different shit for like, hour and i was amazed i said i was amazed first of all 
at how you got Evan to open up. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. I always asked him shit and he shut down, but his big brother was there, so Evan he sang like a canary. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? About anime and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know you was into it that deep either, but yeah, mm-hmm. I could tell you were and, and uh, you know, I, I I felt like over the years, you know, with your uh fantasy sports stuff and and, mm-hmm. and what you've talked to me about i said you know maybe we can do something with sports mm-hmm. and, and so here we are our second video our second video. second video yeah so so let me ask you this let's start with something personal man okay uh, so i'm throwing i'm putting you on the spot i'm letting everybody know that right now i didn't I didn't put this on the rundown, so <laughs> not on my paper. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you something about some sports related, and then you ask me something sports related. So my okay. question, my question to you is: What was your what's what's been your favorite sports memory uh, growing up? My favorite sports memory. Um, well, you may already know the answer to this question. Because uh, my favorite sports memory is, um, I believe I was in, I don't know if at the time I was going into seventh grade or if I was going into eighth grade, but. Seventh. Well, okay, yeah. Yep. Seventh, yeah, going into seventh grade, uh-huh. my dad was coaching at a, uh, a football camp, uh-huh. um, an Aggies football camp at Texas uh-huh. Santa, and yep. I got to take part in it. And yeah, we, we had he wanted he originally thought I was gonna sleep in because everyone slept in the dorms at the college, right? He initially yep. I thought I was gonna sleep in his room, but I was like, no, dad, I'm gonna <laughs> sleep out there. I'm gonna go sleep out there. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you was good. If you was good well, was sleeping great. out there, yeah. I was great. I yeah. had a fantastic time. It was like yeah. two yeah. days, maybe two, three days. Three days, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, it, it was great. I met a lot of people. Man, not anyone I really know now anymore, but right, still. right. Absolutely, yeah. that was yeah. You was going into middle school. Mm-hmm. I uh, that so that was my favorite memory of us as well. Mm-hmm. Sports memory. Uh, I have some others, but I, I really loved the fact that you were gung ho about the camp. Yeah, you really, you know, what I'm saying you jumped right into it. You weren't apprehensive. Mm-mm. You weren't nervous or scared. You know what I'm saying? You did. You did the workouts. You did the mm-hmm. the, the, the the activities. Everything, man. And it was it was a great experience for you and I to have together. I agree. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I try to, you know, get Evan into some of this stuff. You know, he wants to do his own thing, though. He he's a little different breed, so I'm, I, let, I let him make it a lot of times. You know, so. mm. <laughs> what I also enjoy growing up with you, I feel like if, if we to stay connected more. I, I I don't know if you remember, but when we was at the old house, <laughs> we used to work on pitching. I had you throwing the ball against this damn wooden fence, <laughs> and I and you used to do it. You was sweating and tired, <laughs> but you did it, and you didn't complain. <laughs> and yeah, you know, you was great about it. And mm-hmm. I felt like I said, "My, well, you a long, lean, long one." I saw he gonna be a pitcher. <laughs> yeah, you know, so that that was a, a fun memory. For me as well. Mm. Mm. Let's uh, let's get into some of these topics. Uh, so, first topic we have is uh, let's look at UFC. Uh, UFC. So, what do you want to say about what's next for what's his name? Uh, Israel Adesanya. All right, all right. So, Israel, for you, Dad, I'm sure you're not much of a UFC watcher, are you? 
I don't. I'm more of a boxer fan, mm -hmm. uh, but I have I am a little familiar with some guys, but not Israel. No. Okay. Well, Israel Adesanya, he's two losses removed. Formerly the middleweight champion. Okay. Um, he lost his belt to Sean Strickland, who then lost his belt to South African upcomer Drickus Duplessis. Okay. And they fought this last Saturday, Israel Adesanya and Drickus. And if Israel would have won, I think he would have made a good case for greatest middleweight of all time. He still makes a great case despite losing. But okay. uh, uh, I'm sorry. No, I said, okay. Yeah. Um, but he lost. And now he's kind of in a situation as to where, where does he go from here to get back to the title, if that's what he plans on doing still. So greatest middleweight of all time means he probably has a really, really good record. Yeah. Uh, he's won a lot of fights and lost mm -hmm. uh, a few fights. In so, dominant I mean, fashion, he's won. He's also really? lost in dominant fashion, though. Oh, has he? Yeah, 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 unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, hey, so did Mike Tyson, right? Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson lost in dominant fashion and mm -hmm. won in dominant fashion. You mm -hmm. know, it happens. So so what do you think is next for Israel Adesanya? Me, personally? Yep. Retirement. I think he should retire. Okay. Um, the game's changing. Uh -huh. And he definitely could stick around for quite some time uh -huh. in the top, in the upper echelon, because he is an elite level world talent, you know, fighter. Yep. But I think I just I just think it's time to put the gloves down. I don't want him. I, I'm not saying I don't think he can get to the title again because I do. Mm -hmm. Right. But. I think it would take too long, and I just – I really like the guy as a person. Okay. And I don't want to see him um, lose himself trying to get the belt back. You know? Okay. But yeah. how much money can he win uh, trying to get the belt back? <laughs> oh, yeah. He could make a lot of money. Okay. He could, make lots okay. Of money. he could leave the UFC right now and go make lots of money still. In other uh, in doing something other than than fighting, yeah, I mean, oh. or like doing like, cause you know how Conor McGregor boxed Floyd Mayweather, yeah, or how yeah. Francis Ngannou boxed Tyson Fury and mm -hmm. Anthony Joshua, um, yeah, he could he could go box Jake Paul and make make yeah. millions millions make, of dollars, yeah, oh, okay, okay, all right, so he's a big name, oh you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. throwing out names I know. Mm -hmm. So you know, I don't really know Israel Adesanya, but I know the other guy you're throwing out. So if he's in, he must be a good, a good uh, enough fighter. Yeah. So UFC Hall of Fame, uh, is he one of them? Uh, no, he is not okay. in the UFC Hall of Fame. He will be though. No, that no, that, that's what I meant. I mean, is he like? Do you do you see him making it? Yes, definitely, without a doubt. Oh, it would okay. be a crime if he didn't, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It yeah. would be a crime. That's what's up, man. That's mm -hmm. what's up. Then I'll, I'll, I'll watch more fights. If he continues to fight, I'll watch him. Mm. And if he retires, I'll see what's next for him. Yeah. All right. So uh, I just wanted to get this out there, man, because I know last last show, you, 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 threw a, you threw a bomb shell at me. You said that you were a Red Sox fan. Yeah. I said, what? I said, how are you a Red Sox fan? Mm -hmm. You're in Wichita. <laughs> I just chose the team, honestly. On, okay, so you mm -hmm. you came of age in baseball probably at the time the Red Sox were winning or had won yeah. the title yeah. or something. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah, I, I respect that. And with that being said, the Red Sox aren't at the top anymore. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not. Oh, so <laughs> my Astros, mm -hmm. uh, they're in a series versus Red Sox right now. And okay. last night uh, they walked it off in the bottom of the ninth. And uh, I just wanted to rub it in your face. <laughs> it's okay. 
Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 the Astros, uh, who this year were were as much as 10, 15 games below 500. They're now currently about 12 games above 500 and counting. They're, con- they're, they're continuing to rise. They won last night. Uh, they're, they're winning right now. Or no, they're not. Tied. They're, it's tied? It's tied right now. It's tied. Yeah, yeah, it's tied. Yeah. They're going to win tonight. Calm down. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the hometown team, I, I think I have – I got my Astros. Oh, H-Town, stand up. Got my Astros jacket on. Uh, Cassie, my girlfriend's daughter, uh, bought mm. me this. So, okay. Shout out to Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the Astros are sitting sitting in the catbird seat right now in the division, up by five games over uh, the Mariners. Uh, and they uh, they lost in the LCS to the Rangers last year, and the Rangers won the World Series. Oh, that hurt me deep. That mm. hurt me. Mm. You know, uh, but I didn't. I thought maybe their time was over, but maybe not. Maybe not. You know, I mean, I feel like this team is good enough to to get back to the World Series. So we shall see. Let's. Uh, talk some NFL quarterback competition. Okay. Uh, you want to start? Who do you think is a good competition and what do you think is going to come of it? Well, top of my brain, the first quarterback competition um, I think of is Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Right. Um not seeing a lot on a decision between which of the two to start. Me personally, I think I I could understand starting Russell Wilson for the first couple of games. I think you switch in Justin Fields shortly after. Uh, he's the younger guy. He was looking great in Chicago, in my opinion. Um, I was kind of confused or shocked rather when they traded him away. I don't mm-hmm. think the problem was Justin Fields anymore. I think there was uh, more issues around him than alongside, like inside of him, you know. No, I feel Uh, that. I feel that. I feel like uh, uh, Pittsburgh will probably lean towards Russell Wilson Mm. uh, just because he's the veteran. uh, Yeah. We're paying him more money. Uh, And. I feel like if they start him and he continues to perform well, he'll uh, he'll keep the job. But I'm not sure he'll continue to perform well. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I think it it's it probably is it's clear that uh, Justin Fields has the physical, the better physical abilities over uh, Russell Wilson. But Russell Wilson probably has a grasp on the game better mentally. Than Justin Fields, yeah. and a lot of times that that puts you over the top because having a grasp on the game mentally mm-hmm. uh, it allows you to uh, have less turnovers, uh, put your team in less bad positions, you know, uh, and a lot of times you just want to move the ball down the field, and you don't need to just uh, get chunk plays and. And, and, and downfield throws all the time. Uh, you don't need. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, we'll see. Russell Wilson uh, has got to prove that he's not the past couple of years. Russell Wilson, though, or that at least should mm-hmm. be short. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. My uh, quarterback competition right now is in Denver, uh, okay. where you have. Uh, I Go mean, weeks. I. Is it a, is it a three headed monster? Is it well not monster? Is, is it a three headed pussy cat? You got Bo Nix, okay. You got Jared Stidham, and you got Zach Wilson. Is Zach Wilson in that competition? Truly, I don't know. No, but, <laughs> you don't think? So? <laughs> I know, no, right? I don't think he's in the competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's probably a two headed, a two horse race between uh, Nix and Stidham. 
Uh, Stidham's had a few chances in the league, and he hasn't stuck. No. You know, and I feel like Bo Nix is playing well enough to get that first shot. Yeah, I agree. And once you get the first shot, it's just what you do with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, haven't looked at the Broncos' schedule. I can look at it right now, though. Uh, let's see. Because they, they got some monsters right off the bat. They got Seattle at Seattle, Pittsburgh at Tampa Bay, at mm. the Jets. These defenses are tough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. rookie quarterbacks don't fare well against Pittsburgh, the Jets, uh, Seattle. Uh, they just don't. We'll, we'll see. Uh, they, they got a lot of uh, good teams coming up, but uh, Jared Stidham is a young guy as well. So, uh, you know, he may not fare. He may he may play worse than a rookie. Mm-hmm. In the preseason, Bo Nix has been doing his thing, right? No, oh, he's been doing phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, he's mm-hmm. been phenomenal. So, so mm-hmm. we shall we shall see with that one. Uh, any other uh, quarterback competitions, man, of note? No, not any that are. I don't believe so. So, so you said that it was announced. That Jaden Daniels will be the starter in Washington? Yep. Okay. I hadn't heard of that, but considering his competition, McSorley and Driscoll, <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> Give it to the rookie and let's see what he can do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he went 10 for 12 his last time out, this, this last weekend. Only 78 yards, right? No touchdowns, but yeah. – but uh, you know, I would, yeah, if there is not like an established veteran to start in front of a rookie, start him, yeah, might as well, yeah, start him. Don't, don't, don't hold him back, uh, just for the hell of it, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. all right, all right, all right. Now, let's uh talk about the Dallas Cowboys, so CD Lamb. And uh, Dak Prescott are both, I guess, uh, trying to get paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, who do you think gets paid first? Um, probably Dak. Um, it seems I haven't. From what I've seen, it seems Jerry Jones is uh, just he just makes it he. He's probably just talking to talk, big talker. He is, um, but he's making it seem as though he doesn't. He doesn't. He feels he doesn't need CD Lamb on the team for the team to be successful. Either. I don't know that he's outright said that, but that's what I've heard. It yes. seems he he's saying. You know, that's what he's intimating. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's inferring. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So I can definitely see a world in which Dak gets his money first, but. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that's you need the quarterback. You the need quarterback both. So my my thing with this, who has uh, the leverage? Like like Dak is not even sitting out. Dak is still playing, right? Yeah. So yeah. he's not really he's not really trying to leverage his situation. He probably knows he's going to get paid. CD Lamb is sitting out. He's trying to leverage his situation because his 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 agent probably tells him, "Oh, they slow playing us. They ain't calling me back." Blah blah blah. So he's trying to leverage his situation, and he's one of the top five receivers in the league. Mm-hmm. He has he 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 has leverage. He can do yes. that. Uh, but Jerry Jones is a, a stubborn old man. Yeah, like he you know he he doesn't really care about leverage. Mm-hmm. He, he 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 wants to be right. Yeah, and, and he's wrong. Yeah, he could pay C.D. Lamb mid-season. C.D. Lamb missed half the season. The Cowboys lost three games because of it. Mm-hmm. And he will twist the narrative in his favor. Yes, yeah. that's, that's just what he does. But 
I feel like Dak will get paid paid first. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, CD Lamb will get paid shortly after. Yeah, I feel like that that that's uh, the order in which that'll go. I agree. I do agree. Yes, sir. Uh, I did want to touch on. I want to touch on the WNBA. Uh, okay. Yeah. And these two rookie ladies, uh, like, 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 it's just. It's just amazing to me to see this type of basketball from two females, and we've seen it before. Cheryl, mm -hmm. Co Cheryl Swoops, uh, mm -hmm. Cynthia Cooper, uh, you know, Elisa Leslie, Tina Thompson. We've seen it before from bigs, right? We've seen we've seen how good bigs can be. Right, mm -hmm. you know, good guards can be, and yet Caitlin Clark is redefining the guard position. Angel Reese is redefining the big position. It's crazy to me how well Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are doing as rookies when they when all these great rookies have come before them. Yeah. So Caitlin Clark is so Angel Reese had she's got the double double uh, rookie worker, right? Yeah. And she, and, and, and she missed it by one game, and then she's back to another double digit double double uh, streak. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it doesn't stop. Like, and and they're not like ten or twelve rebounds. Angel Reese is getting twenty a night. Yeah. She got 20 against uh Asia Wilson. Mm. I said, well, Asia Wilson had like 12. I mean, she did have 35 points. <laughs> Woo! She had 12 rebounds. <laughs> I'm like, Angel Reese is just beasting on the boards. Caitlin Clark is a double double every night. She's getting 10. She only she averages eight and a half assists. But mm -hmm. it feels like she's getting 10 assists or more every night. Obviously, every other night, but it feels like every night. she's Her shot has come along, her ease with the game. I love watching these two ladies. I love watching the WNBA because of these two ladies. And I can't wait till my daughter gets to the WNBA and starts <laughs> looking threes or either – or either on the block like Leah Boston, and, and start putting these these chicks on her on her back, on her hip, going up, making layups. That's a shout out to my daughter Bree, man. Shout yeah. out to Bria. Shout out to Bria, my little sister. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She loves some basketball. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's get into. So I'll get into some Texans news. And right, if you have right. anything from the Cleveland Browns, you can you can jump in. And we're doing Cleveland and Texans because I'm in Houston. He's a Cleveland Browns fan, yeah. so that's how we're going to do this. We're not going around the whole damn league. Uh, so, Texas news. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, John Amici had a, a really good last preseason game. And I knew he would, and I'm telling you I knew he would because I I knew that it felt like the Texans wanted to increase his trade value, right? So they were going to uh, look for him, come hell to high water, and Michi was going to get 10 targets. Michi was going to get uh, 10 targets to show what he could do, and – Let's see how many targets he got. Uh, John Amici. Seven targets. Six receptions. Uh, 68 yards and a touchdown. 
you know. So, yeah, I felt they were going to target him to try and uh, increase his trade value, but mm-hmm. uh, the first uh, couple of preseason games, he had performed well. Yeah. So he's a good receiver that's not going to make our receiver depth chart, right? We're going to keep other guys. We could keep him, but he wouldn't play very much because they right. have other guys in front of him. So what's what's the next big thing? It's not to just cut him out right. Not to put him on the uh on the uh practice squad where somebody else can scoop him up for free is to get him the ball. Hopefully he catch the bitch because he had been <laughs> he had been dropping some passes. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he did his part. He caught six of the seven targets and he got him a touchdown. So he's gotten some publicity from that. And I think that might be enough for the Texans to get a fifth, sixth, or seventh round pick for him in the trade. What, what do you think, Tyler? I'm sorry, what was that? I said he I think that he did increase his his, his chances of, of uh, of the Texans did increase their chances of getting a fifth, sixth, or seventh round pick for John Amici based on the game he had. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Um. Yeah. Sounds like it. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Cleveland Browns news. What do you What do you have for us? Cleveland Browns news. So our preseason hasn't been looking. I mean, from. If I'm not a Browns fan and I'm looking at our preseason, it's seeming to me like uh, the Browns is going to be the Browns, as they say, and we might we might be <laughs> hot this uh, regular season. Browns going to be the Browns. I disagree, though, obviously. Um, I think we have a new offense, um, and it's just it's just the team getting used to that. Yeah, you got the same old quarterback. Same old quarterback. What's going on with him? You know. <laughs> so, you uh, didn't play this past weekend. Is there a reason for that? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I didn't hear Deshaun Watson mm-hmm. didn't play this weekend. Is he hurt or were they just holding him back? It's probably just probably just playing it safe, I would imagine. That's okay. the reason. Um, probably – Probably just don't want to re-hurt his shoulder. I know Baker Mayfield had uh, continuous problems with his shoulder. Um, I don't think that's something we want to replicate with Deshaun Watson. And the Baker thing was a problem because we allowed him to continue playing when we should have stopped it uh, way before it had got to the point it was at. And I just, again, think they don't want to replicate that same problem with Deshaun. And uh, who knows, maybe – Maybe they just maybe he's gotten so good that they just want to surprise us with it. You know, they don't want to give us a little taste test. You know? mm-hmm. Do you think y'all ran Baker Mayfield too much? Why did he get hurt? Um. Yeah, I think whenever he was hurt, he probably ignored it himself um, and played anyways. And the times that the team knew he was hurt, he still fought to play anyways. Which, looking back, I'm like that was dumb. But at the time. I admired the spirit that he had for doing exactly. That. Everybody did. Yep. Yeah, yep. I, I admired it. I I was like, oh, maybe he shouldn't play. But then to see him campaigning so hard for himself to be the one that plays in the games, I was like, I I start him, run it up, run it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't, it didn't quite work out. Yeah, it did not. And uh, I don't want to go through that with Deshaun Watson. So let me ask you this, like. Uh, Because, you know, uh, Deshaun was in Houston first. Yeah. And we traded him to the Cleveland Browns for Mm -hmm. uh, a boatload of picks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So is Deshaun – is he – is he like – is he is he hurt or is he nervous about like – you know, like it's spotlight is still on him. Like he, he's the same guy, but he's he hasn't performed. Like you've been back two years. He, it's, that's not enough to get back in in prime playing form. 
What's up with Deshaun, man? Um, I do really think that they're just nervous about the shoulder. Uh, he hasn't played since when, like, last year. He hasn't played since last year, 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a matter of he's not the guy to start. I don't want you to think that. Um, J- Jameis Winston's not starting over Deshaun Watson. Love Jameis. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> oh, you heard that? I said I, I would I wouldn't be so sure. I love some J- Jameis Winston. Is I love Jameis Winston as well. He's great. Pronounce the shit. Fantastic yeah, personality. Great. Um fantastic he, player, you know, the 30-30 year. He's yeah, I mean 30-30 year was nice. <laughs> <laughs> you never knew what you was gonna get with that year, bro. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. No, I think I really do just believe that it's the shoulder that okay. they're concerned about. Um, yep. They don't want to take a chance on him messing it up in a preseason game. And if they feel as though they don't need to play him because they still are undecided on whether he's going to play in so, our next one. So how can they be sure? Or how are you sure? Or let me say, this, are you sure? Have you seen in the off season, in the preseason, anything – that gives you confidence that Deshaun Watson is back to old Deshaun Watson. Old Deshaun Watson as in Houston? Yes. Houston Deshaun Watson? I mean, um, yeah, I watched, Deshaun, I, uh, I watched Deshaun Watson play football last year. Um, I don't – now, look, I'm not saying he is 100% back. I think we all know that he's not. But um, if he can be healthy, I watched him win – what, he played – he played seven, one, six of the seven, or he played six and one, five of the six. Okay, uh, that, that's the him. narrative you want to say. But did he win them, or was he just the quarterback and the defense carried y'all? Our defense was great. That that's that's a fair point to make. But he did win those games alongside our defense that also won us those games. We won the games as a team. So right here, right now, uh, tell me. Is Deshaun Watson a game manager? Is he a game manager? For us, he was a superstar. For Mm -hmm. for the Browns, uh, is he a game manager? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I'm telling you from what I've seen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you from what I've seen. Deshaun Watson is a good quarterback. I need to see more. I need to see more from him. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's a He's game great. manager. Game managers are good. He's great. He needs I just I just need to see more to put him in a classification. And I haven't. But I I've seen, seen enough to more. know he can win. So you haven't seen and more he to say he's great, but you're not willing to say he's a game manager. I'm just not willing to put him in a box yet. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Moving on from Deshaun, let's go to some uh, college football, right? Uh, I sent you this, so so, uh, I'm interested to hear your take, your thoughts. Uh, Oklahoma State putting QR codes on their helmets to help raise NIL funds. Uh, It's outside the box. It's vintage Mike Gundy. What are your thoughts? Um, it's interesting. Um, I mean, go crazy. I, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't know what bad could come from it. Yeah. 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 Um, all you, know, you all you gonna get is money is in your account. Exactly. The more the merrier, right? Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Go crazy. I wish I'd have thought of it first. <laughs> I bet a bunch of coaches wish they'd have thought of it. Yeah. First. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but that's one of those things that when you hear it, you're like, why did I think of that? Because mm-hmm. you're not a mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> like Mike Gundy seems like one of those mad scientist type of coaches where he mm-hmm. just be thinking of outside the box type shit all the time. Mm-hmm. And occasionally he'll hit on something. The, the I'm a man, I'm 40. 
he didn't hit on that. That that, yeah. that got him bad, but, but you know, this is decent. This is decent, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and so, from what I was reading, it, it'll be like a one inch by two inch uh, QR code on the helmet, so it won't be visible from the stands. Mm-hmm. However, it'll be visible on television. Uh, they'll have the QR code on all the merch inside the stadium and all that type okay. of stuff. Yeah, so, so you know, uh, it's going to be all types of places where regular people can contribute money to Oklahoma State's NIL fund. Uh, so Boone Pickens uh, Foundation doesn't have to uh, give as much. Is mm-hmm. Boone Pickens still a lot? Well, you're young. Do you do you I, even know who Boone Pickens is? I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, how did I know? How did I know? You know it's Boone Pickens Stadium at Oklahoma State, right? I do now. Yeah, you do now. So Boone Pickens was a, a big time booster of, of, of Oklahoma State, and he was old like 20 years ago. So he's mm. probably not around anymore. But if he is, more power to him. Mm. Right. But the QR code on the helmet, uh, I feel like it'll, it's going to be a trend. I don't think they're going to be the last team to do it. You think other teams are going to pick it up? How soon? Yeah. You think like here in like a couple of days soon, other teams no. are going to be announcing no. QR we're codes not. on our helmets? <laughs> I'd be surprised if, if, if any team did it the rest of this year because yeah. teams don't like to just – they like to steal shit, but they don't like to piggyback. Yeah. There's a difference. Like, I'll wait till next year, then I'll take the idea. I'm not Maybe. just going to do it right after you you introduced it, right? Gotcha. Yeah. But, yeah they'll so. wait till next year, but it'll be a few teams. And maybe not SEC. Maybe not even all of the Big 12. But I, I, I bet you teams that are low on NIL funds, I bet you they say, hmm. <laughs> or things that make you Definitely. go. Definitely. Mm, yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Absolutely. And I mean, if I was a player for a team that wasn't doing that, I'd be like, "We need to hop on this. This is what we need to start doing." Mm-hmm. It's a different type of fundraising, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's uh, move into the uh, SEC. SEC. What do we got? Uh. So SEC. How many? Uh, CFP college football playoff teams do you think the SEC will have and who do you think they, they will be? I can name them off the top of my head, but I want to I want to uh, let me see get, get to them. The SEC teams mm-hmm. I've been in Florida, LSU, Arkansas, Georgia, Mississippi State So, basically, the SEC teams uh, is going to be, I mean, the the playoff team is top 12. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to be six conference champions, Mm -hmm. six at large. Yeah. Obviously, the SEC can only have one champion. Yeah. So, uh the next thing to think of is how many at-large bids do we think we'll get? Two. Who, do think, who do you think will be the champ? What did you say? I said. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you said two. Who's going to be the champion? Who do you think will be the SEC champion? Uh, probably Alabama. I say Georgia. Okay. Hmm, that's right. fair. Yeah, that's like tomato, tomato. <laughs> mm-hmm. Either one of them can win it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, even though Nick Saban's not there anymore, I, I feel like Kalen DeBoer, head coach of Alabama, has won everywhere he's been. Yeah. Right? And I, I see more talent than he's ever had in his life at Alabama. Uh, as long as he doesn't get overwhelmed by the system, because mm-hmm. that's what happens to a lot of coaches uh, at UT, overwhelmed by the system. Uh, at AM, overwhelmed by the system. Uh, at, at, you know, at other places, 
they get overwhelmed by how big something is, right? Mm-hmm. As long as that doesn't happen to Kalen DeBoer, he should be fine. Uh, but if Georgia wins, I fully expect Alabama to be top 12. If Alabama wins, I expect yeah. Georgia to be top 12. So that's two, right? Well, well okay, okay. Well, We're saying well, two, assuming outside two. of the champion. Like, I, I, said two outside, I, I meant to outside of the champion, whoever that ends up being. Oh, so um, three. Three. So three, yeah, so three. Okay, you say three. I say <clears throat> I say five. Who are your three? Uh, Alabama, Georgia. Who's going to be third best team in the SEC? I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure. Okay. It's gonna be a handful of teams to pick from. Trust me. Yeah. What? So, what, so, so, what? Who do you think? Who do you think out of your five? Okay. So, I have uh, right now Georgia, Alabama, Missouri, Ole Miss, and. Texas a and Okay. I started to say LSU, but I feel like they'll be the sixth team. They might yeah. be top 15, but that might be right outside of CFP. Yeah. A&M is starting at number 20, mm-hmm. and I feel like they're going to be a lot better than most anybody expects. I feel like they'll be a top 10 team. Okay. Uh, Missouri, I feel like they'll be a top 10 team. Okay. Ole Miss will be probably – 10, 11, or 12. And those will be your top – those will be your five SEC teams that make it. Okay, so this is – that's – okay, that's Mizzou. I gotcha. Yeah, I probably would have said them for my third. <clears throat> Missouri? Yeah, Missouri. Yeah, yeah. They were really, really good last year. Got a they lot of great. pieces coming back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just uh, a quick – you know, tidbit, uh, their running backs coach, uh, Curtis Looper, was a grad assistant at SFA when I played there. Okay. Yep, I know Curtis Looper well. Uh, well I knew him well. I haven't talked to him in, in 25 years, but I knew him well. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he's a good dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, he's been uh, rising up the ranks. He hasn't been an OC yet, as far as I know, but he's been he's been running backs coach at, at Oklahoma State for a long time. Did really well. He was running backs coach at Auburn with Coach Chiswick when they won the uh, national title. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's at Missouri. I mean, the man has been in a lot of places, and his running backs have produced everywhere he's been. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, just a tidbit there. He's a he's a Jack. He's a, a little Jack. Uh, so you you have three. I have five. Mark it down. Mark okay, it. we're gonna see. We're gonna see who's closest. Uh, one last topic, or or, or uh, just just this is moving. In. So, who is your surprise team nationally? Who's your surprise team nationally? Uh that you feel will come out of nowhere and possibly compete for a CFP playoff spot. Not necessarily make it, but come from maybe not ranked to a top 15 team or in the 20 through 25 range and make a CFP. Who's your team? Mm. You go first. Let me, let me, yeah. Mind over for sure, for sure, for sure. <clears throat> so, my surprise nationally, uh, national team is the University of Houston Cougars. And, 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 and I'll say this 
uh, uh, Houston is they're in a big conference now. They're in the Big Twelve, so yeah. they're no longer in the American Athletic Conference, which was always holding them back. They're in a bigger conference, and they and they've got a legit head coach in mm-hmm. Willie Fritz. He's won everywhere he's been. He's won titles everywhere he's been. He took he took Tulane to a major bowl win. Tulane. <clears throat> and uh he was at coaching school this uh this past summer and I, I did I actually spoke to him and talked to him. Talked to him about my my uh good buddy Johnny Jernigan, who used to be on his staff. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Willie Fritz is now the, the head coach of University of Houston. He was at Sam Houston State all those years. Sam Houston State was winning. Uh, they won a, a national title. They went to the title game two or three other times. Uh, he was at T- Tulane. He was at Georgia Southern when Georgia Southern uh, was winning football games. He's just a great coach. And now he, uh, the, I feel like uh, the conference they moved into along with him as the head coach, can make them a dark horse, a dark horse to at least compete for one of those spots. Okay. Um, I think Iowa State. Okay. I think Iowa State, they're getting back uh, a lot of starters from their – from on the offense and defense last year. Yeah, um, including their quarterback. Uh, his name's Rocco. What starts with like a B or something? Okay. Um. Yeah, I just think. So I think they can do it. Yeah, another uh, another Big Twelve mm-hmm. team. Yeah, Big yeah. Twelve. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, you're not gonna have uh, any uh, national dark horses from the SEC. You're not gonna have any national dark horses from the Big Ten. Yeah, they have, um, and they beat uh, they beat Oklahoma State in Kansas State uh, at the end of last year. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so uh, our state is prime. They prime is it? They are primed. Primed yeah. to uh, make a run. Mm-hmm. You know, and I feel like. Having twelve teams able to get in this playoff instead of four, it's going to create that much more competition. Four and, is so crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, it's why did it stay four game. for so long? Why are they just now changing it? Exactly, because probably, like so... probably because of TV deals. Mm. Yeah, it's they just so TV limited. Contracts. It's very limited. Mm. Uh, but they, they, you know, they they knew that. And I feel like they 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 did the right thing by opening it up, and I'm yeah. thankful because I thought they were going to only do eight teams. You know, they mm-hmm. like to creep these te- these things, <laughs> low play these things. But I'm glad they 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 opened it up with, with twelve. Do you like twelve, or would you do a bigger number? I like twelve. Yeah, I, like I don't think it could be like the NCAA March Madness. Yeah, you can't you, can't, you know? There's too many bowls mm-hmm. and. Uh, too many teams that have a possibility to win six games. Yeah, you're gonna play a bowl, which is a nice feather in a, a decent season's cap, right? <laughs> but the top 10 to 15 teams, yeah, I would do 16, I would go that high, but I wouldn't go no more than that. Yeah, you know, FCS did does 16 teams, good, yeah, and it's five rounds, it's not mm-hmm. that, that, that much, but yeah. I wouldn't do more than that, but twelve is, is a good number. I'm fine with that for now. Way better than four. Way better than four. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Anything else, man? Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else tickle your fancy? Uh, Colt McCoy. Go ahead, Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy retired. Yeah. That's uh, right. Toby has a wonderful life. Mm. He's the original uh, Cleveland Brown. The original Cleveland Brown, some some may say. Drafted some in the third round in uh, 09. 2009, when I was yeah. nine years old and had no idea who he was. <laughs> so, Cole McCoy uh, went to the University of Texas, uh, and I thought he was a really good college quarterback. And 
He led UT to a national title game appearance. Uh, the last one they had, matter of fact, and uh, they played Alabama, and I fully expected UT to beat Alabama. Mm-hmm. And in the first quarter, that big, a big Alabama defensive lineman put a helmet to his shoulder, and it went, it just went numb. Mm-hmm. And he went off the game, and Texas uh, lost the game, and they ended up barely losing. You know, yeah. by four. So I feel like they, they would have won if they'd had it. So, you know, that's one less title Nick Nick uh, Saban would have had, one more that Matt Brown would have had. But, you know, uh, uh, I'm an Aggie, so it, it don't matter either way. I'm not, I'm, so a lot of Aggies, I dare say most, are uh, UT haters, Right. I don't love UT, but I'm not a hater. Mm-hmm. Like that. I'm saying like I, I root for teams in Texas, but but uh, yeah. UT is, is definitely an arch nemesis, and they could get it. But uh, you know, I, I root for them to lose a, a lot of big games. <laughs> but yeah, I I'll, I'll root for them to win six games and make a bowl game. You know, and and mm-hmm. I say I'm an Aggie. I didn't. I, I graduated from uh, Stephen F. Austin. I went, I'm a lumberjack, played football for the lumberjacks, but I've, I've been a, a Texas A&M fan since middle school, since Darren Lewis, uh, who just passed away. He's the SC, SWC oh, Southwestern Conference, RP Southwestern Conference, the uh, leading rusher. Uh, yeah, he just passed away, but I have a picture with Darren Lewis when I was like 13. He came nice. to Marshall. Yeah, he's one of my – one of my friend's cousins. He came to Marshall at went to church and I took a picture with him. Yeah. So I've uh, been an Aggie uh, fan for way from way back. Uh but I'm not a UT hater. Just uh just an Aggie fan. Okay. Uh, yeah man. So uh your favorite college team man let me know what is it it's Clemson it's Clemson um I'm starting to think maybe the Maybe Clemson, because when I chose my favorite college team, uh huh, um, I think I did it more based on the players at that time. And uh, who were the players at that time on Clemson? Uh, Des- Deshaun Watson. Oh, well, of course. he had been. I, I guess I chose him a, a year after he had left, but I did like him. So he, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence did he influence so Trevor Lawrence? Trevor Lawrence was the reason, pretty much. Okay. Um, yeah. So it, it's still true now. Clemson is still my team, but there's other teams I support too. I'm not super like loyal to. Uh, to but I'm I'm happy you chose Clemson because mm-hmm. <clears throat> for number one, uh, Dabo it seems cool enough, right? Mm-hmm. But my connections to Clemson, just to let you know, uh, one of my coaches in college, my linebackers coach. He was a DB at Clemson in the late mm-hmm. 80s. Yep. Okay. Our receivers coach, coach, well, my linebacker's coach is Coach Nunn. Our receivers coach back then was Chip Davis. He was a receiver at Clemson in the 80s. Okay. Yeah. And then my uh, one of my teammates, Jeremiah Trotter, mm-hmm. his son was a middle linebacker for Clemson in the last three years. Uh, it was just drafted, I feel like so. So that, that those three are my connections to Clemson, and uh, yeah, so I'm glad uh, you know you're a Clemson fan, man. Yep, I chose them. Yeah, but I mean, I still support like KU. Mm-hmm. I live in Kansas. I I gotta support KU. Yeah, um, yeah. I still support Texas A&M. You oh, know, man. yes, sir. There's that camp there, I can't not support them. I'm you know? telling you, man. Yeah. Hey, we 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 had some fun. It was a great time. Yeah, I mean, man. Mm-hmm. where you going, man? Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna go get this pizza. And you, <laughs> what? You were twelve, so I'm like, I don't know about letting you just run around by yourself. But <laughs> we're twelve, so I did it. And I'm glad you had a good time, man. Uh, mm-hmm. So did I, big dog. Uh, episode two, man. Episode two, we wrapped it up, baby. Clap it up, clap it up, yeah. <laughs> I actually took notes this time. I could tell. Yeah. Oh, man, you you were really 
uh, involved. You you were really uh, students. I could tell you really had some good takes, and, and and you know, I could tell. And I saw you over there uh, looking at your notes because when I was talking, you was like, uh, "What'd you say?" <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's looking at his notes. That's, <laughs> that's what's up. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Shit. Good deal, my brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always say my brother, man. But that's okay. You can say that. I say my brother as well. <laughs> you know, something that's crazy. I noticed when I came and visited, we say a lot of the same things. But we have a lot of the same, like, mannerisms. And that's Absolutely. just crazy to me because, like, like, you, like you mentioned earlier in the show, how our relationship has been long distance mostly. Uh-huh. So like yep. we haven't really actively spent a lot of time around each other uh-huh. but for us to still develop the same mannerisms and uh, it's crazy, right? It's it's wild, yeah. It's, it's sure. wild, absolutely, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, your uh your cousin, you know, cousin Carlton, mm-hmm. his son uh, Brad uh checked out the the, the, the last episode. He, oh, did they? He, he enjoyed it, man. He loved it. He's like, yeah. Oh. He was like, Yeah, he can folk. <laughs> Shout out to Brad, man. Brad, yes, sir. Man. Yeah, he's a good dude. Uh, cool, man. Uh, so, uh, for the people that uh listening on uh, any po- podcast uh, channels, uh, go ahead, comment, uh, uh share the video. Yeah, real like, quick, then. Go ahead, my, my dude. Comment how many SEC teams you guys think are going to be in the college football playoffs. Bet I got three. Five to three. I got three. He's got five. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Uh, like, subscribe, share. Mm, don't right? forget that. Right? Sharing is caring. Yeah. Right? Uh, and me and Tyler are gonna keep doing this thing, keep building our bond, keep growing together, uh bonding through sports, through family, with love, man. Good, Tyler? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought you had something to say. All right. Uh so <laughs> Three, two, one. We out. <laughs> hey, we see. We said the same thing. We said we, we out. Did, exactly. Look, <laughs> what am I talking about? Yes, sir. Love you, man. Right. Goodbye. Bye.